Simon says subscribe and click on the bell icon to receive notifications. In this lesson, we are going to stay with neurofilters. We're going to stay with this particular image, and we are also going to stay with Photoshop Beta. And again, I want to make sure that we are working with our Photoshop Beta version. You are going to see that we do have more options to work with, um, and you're going to see that they are offering a lot more experimental options. And also, I want to show you where that wait list is so you can see what's coming down the pike. So in this lesson, we are going to talk about um, Smart Portrait. But while we're there, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things that are coming up for us in future versions. So you see here the Neural Filter panel is going to open up. And you're going to see over here on top, we have All Filters. And then on the right hand side of that little tab, you have the wait list. So some kind of fun ones looking forward to portrait generator, generate unique photorealistic faces based on characteristics you specify. Okay, that's going to be interesting, right? So maybe it'll be completely AI, right? We're kind of doing that already to a certain extent, but this one is going to really superpower it. Okay water long exposure notice how the differences between these so this is a little more smooth right this is a little more choppy so essentially it mimics when you're taking a picture with your camera and you have a longer exposure open with your camera lens it smoothens it out a little bit right so it's good with light good with water a few other things but you can transform that okay and then you have this shadow regenerator so i took it at the wrong time of the day what a bummer well, Photoshop can work through that and then make it so your shadow is no longer there and then it just brightens up everything that it sees as a shadow. Okay, And then noise reduction, you can just see basically just kind of improves your photo overall. If it just sees that there's you know maybe just some dust or just something coming in from the light um, to time of the day, it just understands what a good photo is. All right, so as you're coming through these, kind of give it your vote, tell them that you are interested. <laughs> All right. Very good. Now, let's go over here to Smart Portrait. And you're going to see how it is going to give me a nice little overview of what it's going to do. And it does show me some uh, examples of it. All right. And you can see here, this filter processes image data in the cloud, which means that it's going to take a little bit of time. All right. Now, we are not going to do all of these, okay, because they do take a long time. And in my opinion, they're not perfect yet. They are not ready for prime time. We're going to do a handful of these just so you can see what it can do. And at some point, maybe you'd like to do them on your own. And then maybe in six months from now, they are improving. So I would recommend keep coming back to the Creative Cloud portal and then making sure to see if there's any updates and then make those updates on the beta version. Okay, so what we have to do first of all is just toggle this on. This all lights up. Okay, now the thing that I've seen that does not work very well is this happiness. So I'm not going to mess with that too much. I have seen that it actually makes you look less happy a little bit more effectively. The happiness itself just really makes you look like a like kind of a fake human being. It just kind of plops on uh, a smile on your face. So I'm not really going to show you that one because it's going to take a lot of time just for all of us to be very disappointed. The facial age, I've seen what it does, it kind of messes with your with your hair and it'll also mess a little bit with like your your skin a little bit and the shape of your face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a little bit older. Okay, so you can see there I am and I'm a 50 years old right there and we're going to see what we can do to make me look a little bit older. Okay, now this could be good just for whatever reason, you know, because you just need to do something for advertising, right? And you're creating this reality of somebody who is the star, but then, you know what, here they are, you know, without this product, or here they are in the future as a grandfather, something like that, you can do that. So let's just go ahead and increase this. Now, again, I just want to warn you, this will take a little bit of time, depending on your computer and your internet speed and the image itself. All right, so here I go. I'm just going to drag this up to about here. Now let's just see if that's actually 25 years or these numbers are kind of arbitrary. All right, it's kind of more like a 25% type of thing, but we'll see. Now in the bottom, you'll see here it is processing it in the cloud. So it's doing its thing. It's going to take some time. And then I'm going to stop talking and I will fast forward past this part, but you will see a difference once we finish. And we're back. Actually, that wasn't so bad. I stopped talking for about 10 seconds. And you can see it's actually not bad. 
right? It, it's like, okay, here's this guy. They didn't make me like, you know, super bald or super fat, but they did definitely ageify me, right? So if I want to see what it looked like before, let's go ahead and click on this original. And we can see that's actually <laughs> kind of scary, kind of creepy, but pretty realistic. It thinned out my hair, added on some gray there. Okay, and then I think it yeah, brought back my hairline, made my face a little bit kind of wider with gravity, you know, added on some more eye stuff. Okay, so let's just go ahead and see again the before and after. All right, so even like underneath you know, my cheek, everything like that. So that's pretty good. So hair thickness, all right, if I am really trying to kind of go next level, I can give myself a little less hair. And you're going to see it doesn't go extreme with this. It doesn't just suddenly like chop off your hair. Like it recognizes the context of the character and of the subject that we're working with. So let's just go ahead and bring this down a little bit. And again, wait for the AI to process in the cloud. And we're back. Not so bad. And you can see again, it did chop off a little bit of hair up on top there. And that is probably what I will look like. I mean, it's really shockingly accurate but I will have to save this and come back in 20 years or so, and we'll see, okay? Now, eye direction, I don't tend to mess with that one too much, I mean, unless it's absolutely necessary, um, but I haven't seen that a lot of success with that one. Let's just scroll down a little bit, and you'll see there's also these expressions, right? Surprise and anger. So if we remove the happiness down lower, or we increase the anger, we'll see that we're gonna get, I won't say the same results, but I will, I'm more likely going to work with the anger than the surprise, right? And this surprise may, you know, open up its eyes a little bit, definitely open up the mouth a little bit. And again, I'm not super impressed with those results. But let's just go ahead and make this old guy a little bit angrier. Let's just see what happens there. And again, processing in the cloud. Let's wait for it. Okay, and that was only about, what, 10, 15 seconds. And you can see, all right, he kind of looks a little angrier. Okay, well, let's just go back to where he was before. All right, he wasn't super smiley to begin with, but you can see, all right, yeah, I guess I can see him being a little bit angry or a little bit more kind of inquisitive and curious. But you'll want to really play around with these. Just good to know that they exist and how easy it is for us to work with them. Okay, and then global, you have your head direction, the light direction. Just really play around with those, okay? And if it's really important to you, have it move a little bit, okay? I like him looking right at the camera, but you see that it does it does do what it needs to do. It changes the light direction. Those aren't so bad, but just know these options are here and they're gonna be inside of your uh, smart portrait, all right? And then you can see here, if you wanted to work with these, right? Retain the unique details of it, right? So whatever that means, like it's recognizing certain things like the shape you can see here, like, you know, my, uh, my ears, and my crow's feet, all that stuff. You really want to make sure that it retains the original quality of it. Maybe you don't want it at all. Maybe you're trying to go a little bit more extreme. You can always bring this down altogether. Okay? All right. And then when you bring this back, if you are doing some type of mask on here, if you are choosing to use a mask on this, you can actually make it so the feathering um, is a little bit lighter on that, so it's not sort of a hard edge around it, right? So kind of a good rule of thumb, keep it around this same number. I wouldn't mess with this too much. All right, so again, let's go ahead and check out the handiwork. Okay, and I'll see you in about 25 years, Grandpa. And now I'm going to keep it at Smart Filter. I'm going to click OK. It's running its thing. And there we are, and very similar to our last exercise, we see here is a nice little mask that I can maybe bring some of this hair back if I want to, right? Maybe I can bring some of my smile back, right? And whatever you want to do, trim my face up a little bit. So once again, I go back over to here to my mask. And again, I'm going to choose my uh, black brush. And typically when I'm working with my brushes, I do like to have my hardness all the way down to zero. If yours isn't already, you might want to check that out if it's not working properly. And then for now, I am going to bring up my opacity to 100%. And let's just see what's happening underneath here, where you can see, okay, you know what? Let's bring this some of this hair back a little bit. Okay, all right, not bad. See, I have that kind of control, right, to bring some of that back if I want to. I can also zoom in here and see, well, what did they do here with this part of my lip, right? Okay, I could bring that back. So you can see, I still have control even after the filter has been applied. Okay, 
So try that out. This is going to be our neural filter number two. Super powerful. Keep checking back for some of the new filters coming up and also experiment with some of the other parts of this particular filter in the coming days on ones that I did not show you. See if it works and certainly give Photoshop some feedback as you try it. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.